Hi, everybody. Welcome to this special CUBE presentation on location at HPE headquarters here in Houston. I'm here with Jason Newton. Jason, it's so great to see you. I was here almost exactly a year ago for the all hands meeting. Place was tricked out, beautiful headquarters. How you doing, man? Good Great, to see you. man. Welcome back. I've finally got you back on my home turf, right? Yeah. So uh, I used to live in Houston. Did you yeah, really? I spent a couple summers here, yeah, doing just really weird, odd jobs. But uh, it's good to be back. Yeah. Wonderful weather. A little funky this morning, but uh, but I'm excited to be here and uh, do a little Discover preview with you. Okay. You know, you and I have been together for a number of Discovers. I think I was trying to count them up. All the of other them, day. probably. I, I, uh, probably well over ten. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but now yeah. you guys have brought back the, uh, the European Discover, which is which is amazing. Yep. So uh, we're really excited this year. It, it feels like post COVID, there's just a new energy around HPE uh, and certainly Discover. I, I, I don't know if that's because you guys hit your your stride now after the split. Um, you've got momentum in your businesses. You've made some great acquisitions. What, what do you attribute it to? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly it. I think the strategy has been really consistent since day one of Antonio taking over the CEO role and. You know, every year we progress and we show you know how we're staying on on course um, and building out and adding new innovation, and the the outcomes and the results are really coming to life. And so we're, we're attracting more and more people, saying, "I want more of, of HP GreenLake and what HP is doing here." Um, and and now with AI, it's I think brought a whole another level of excitement of how do all those components come together to help customers. So you got your data center, your edge to cloud, your hybrid strategy that was all sort of in sync, and all of a sudden. Gen AI comes in. So how do you think about that? Do you just Gen AI-ify that existing strategy? How do you think about that? Yeah, we, we look at, AI, at Gen AI more broad. We look at AI and all the advanced analytics. Um, and you know, if you piece apart that workload, tuning, training, inferencing, and machine learning, all of those different components, and then you look at the workflow, like building the data pipeline, feeding the data and the data scientists, designing and building and testing the model, it's, it's a hybrid workload, right? Um, so that ties directly into our strategy around why we've been harping on, we believe the world will be hybrid and a hybrid cloud platform is desired because you're gonna have to bring together and connect um, multiple different data sets, compute and storage resources, right? To, to act upon that data. You need to provide access and um, accessibility to the teams that need to get in there and, and take those tools and their Juniper notebooks and those types of things and act on it. And, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a hybrid problem, right? And I suppose, you know, the next thing you're like, where does Juniper fit into all of this? Well, before we do that, yeah. so if I understand it correctly, your hybrid IT strategy extends into hybrid AI. In other words, all the AI is not going to happen in the cloud, just like all the Correct. IT isn't happening in the cloud. And, you know, we've talked about the big model training occurs in the cloud, but a lot of domain of specific models, a lot of the, the, the industry specific LLMs, maybe they're smaller, maybe even there are some large ones are actually going to happen where their data lives on prem. Are you seeing that? Is that what your customers are telling? Yeah, you? even in the <clears throat> tuning space, like, or the, I'm sorry, the training space, um, some of that's happening in the public cloud. A lot of that's happening in private clouds. It's happening on prem. It's happening in some of these um, specialty AI providers, right? That are providing a, a dedicated set and stack of resources to go, you know, optimize for a specific model. So we're seeing that is hybrid, but then when you develop the model, you deploy the model, you do the you do the in, the the inferencing, that's deployed out at the edge. You know, it's it's out where things are happening and working, and that's where uh, most enterprises see the major opportunity. They're not going to build their own models. What they're doing is taking models and using their own data, often training it in a private environment, and then deploying it at their edges to do the inferencing and the tuning. So you brought up Juniper, <clears throat> I want to talk about that. Is, yeah. Should we think about Juniper as a networking play and, or an AI play? And you're going to say both, but, but explain that. Well, I mean, clearly adding Juniper to our already you know, strengths with Aruba, we, you know, the core of the company now is a networking, is going to be a, a networking company, um, but it does play into AI. Again, we talked about AI being a hybrid workload. You've got these resources and the, um, the, you know, the inferencing and the tuning happening in all these different places, secure connectivity becomes paramount. And how do I bring and stitch that whole thing together? And just like you need um, different resources for compute and storage that are optimized for the demands of AI, the networking is going to be the same. Um, you're also going to see an increase in complexity in all of this environment. And one of the strengths that 
by combining our company with their company is what we can do with AI operations to really power and manage that and deliver a whole new experience. Well, it's interesting when flash storage hit the data center, the all flash data center, a new bottleneck was created. Because remember, it used to be the spinning disk was the bottleneck. Now yep. the network's the, network. the bottleneck. And yep. so if you can use machine intelligence to optimize and, and, and secure, that's beginning to be a game changer. Well, and how do you use it to optimize the entire environment? Mm -hmm. You know, the workload, what it's running on, how it's connected, the storage devices. Again, the world's just getting more and more complex. And so even under the covers of the solutions and the HP GreenLake platform, we're, we're bringing much more of the AI operations capabilities built in so that it can be, you know, AI driven. Um, because again, you know, we're, we're still on that progression of moving out of, customers moving out of having to care and feed for their infrastructure. Um, and spend more time on the innovation piece, and, and that's going to mean spending more time with their data and with AI. You said platform. I want to ask you about, about yeah. platform. Platform platform over products is kind of a big theme that we talk about a lot on, on the Cube. Uh, we love products, but, but, but platforms allow you to do certain things that maybe products are too narrow to, to handle. I'll give you an example. The data shows that about 20% of the enterprises out there still are not leaning in to Gen AI. That surprised me, so I went out and tried to find some, some folks who weren't. Yep. and ask them why. And two reasons came up. The first was, things are moving too fast, so we're gonna step back and see what happens. And the second was, you know, the hallucinations, the quality's just not there. And my thinking is that if you have a platform, you'll be able to adjust to those changes over time and in a continuous cycle, improve the quality. Uh, so it seems to me platform thinking is consistent with how you should be thinking about your AI strategy. What do you think about that? 100%. I mean, we think that customers should, you know, don't chase the tech products for AI. Start embracing a platform-based approach to how you're going to tackle AI. And it's the same approach that we recommended for tackling the hybrid cloud issues, right? Um, you were with us in 2019. We said we're going to deliver everything as a service. Yep. Within that, the next 12 months, we realized the only way to make that happen and to deliver a consistent experience across everything was we kind of have to build a platform specifically for the demands of hybrid cloud. And that's where our CTO came on board, Fidel Maruso. Um, she's been leading that vision. She's the big evangelist for, for that. Um, you'll see a lot of new innovations around the platform experience, especially tuned towards AI um, that we'll be announcing at Discover um, this year. But yeah, it gives that customer an opportunity to say, hey, I can you know, start small, smart, start in different, you know, pieces of AI, um, learn, um, do so with guardrails and a safe space. As new technology comes in, I can adopt that, I can grow that. Um, I don't have to requalify every little bit and piece of thing that, that they're bringing in the environment. Just the, the same reason that a platform in the public cloud was, was appealing. We believe that a, a hybrid cloud optimized, platform optimized for AI is going to be equally appealing once the enterprises are ready to jump in. Let's talk about what's happening with, with customers and maybe some of the common use cases. If you can give some customer examples, that would be great. Uh, a lot of the use cases we see are kind of chat GPT-like. We're summarizing text, or maybe assisted with, with code, maybe there's some image generation, but, but some of the really hard, complex, you know, solving cancer type of problems, mm. it's a little riskier and it's going to take some time yeah. to evolve. I think ROI expectations, they're still short, but they're, they're being a little bit more conservative. What are you seeing? Are there any you know, customer stories that you can share? Yeah, well, I mean, HPE is unique because of our breadth. So we, we definitely see that high-end use case that we're enabling. You mentioned um, drug discovery, mm -hmm. um, the things that we're doing um, with Frontier, with National Labs. I mean, we're in the high end of all of that, but when you talk to the everyday enterprise, um, what they're looking for, almost every use case that I hear, it's, it's about productivity. How do I increase productivity of my team um, and you know, piece it apart any which way? That's what it always, always, always uh, boils down to is, is productivity. And I think that they're using that as a safe space to learn. It gives them a tangible ROI. It gives them a business case that they can then justify the investment to the board. And then it gives them the opportunity to learn so that they can grow on top of that. And there's still the macro. I mean, the data shows that you know, the CPI data was out today and that's not going to necessarily, you know, help with the IT spending you know, book. You've got the AI tailwind, but it's against a headwind of conservative IT spending. And so people want to get a return. I think that's why they're focusing on the productivity and they're trying to figure out, okay, how do we throw off enough cash to reinvest? We're not, you've seen these, these waves before. The, yep. the new stuff's not monetizable enough to offset 
you know, the investments that you have to make in the existing infrastructure. So it takes some time and it's not always, it's not always smooth ride. No, and I think we're in the first <clears throat> inning of this. I think this is <clears throat> just like the early days of, of the cloud revolution. Yeah. Um, you know, there was a lot of rushing in and that trough of disillusionment or whatever, you know, Gartner calls it. Uh, you know, we're seeing that happen. We think we're in another 10 to 15 year cycle here with AI and we're at the very beginning of it. Yeah, and, and of course the funding is, uh, is coming in uh, hard, hot and heavy. I'm sure you, you see that in your partner and your ecosystem. You're enabling your ecosystem actually in many ways. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about Discover. Every year, I mean, it's kind of your, your big show. Every year you guys up, up the game, uh, we've yeah. seen that. I mean, attendance has been fantastic. You always have some really interesting, cool demos and it's a big partner celebration as well early on in the show. Uh, what can we expect this year? Well, um, Discover's been completely reimagined for 2024. Um, you know, one of the biggest changes, number one, is we used to have two events. I think you've been to both of them. One was called Aruba Atmosphere, which is our networking and our ed airhead community. Um, we would do that in the early spring and then the rest of HPE would be Discover in late June bring all that together into one. Great. So the first year back from pandemic, we were at 8,000. Last year, we we're at 10,000. This one's going to be 12 to possibly, you know, more than that um, this year. But we started to see the advantages of bringing these communities together. We did a test run in Barcelona um, and overwhelmingly positive. Um, so many co traditional HPE customers are so eager to learn about what's going on on the Aruba side of things. Um, that's going to be a huge win for us. And, you know, if you're a, a dyed in the dyed in the wool Aruba airhead, um, you're still going to have that feeling, that same experience, your own space, your own community and come together. Um, that's a big change. Um, the second big change is in addition to that conference within Discover happening, we built a whole program just around AI. So if you want to bring in you know, your data science teams, your AI teams, um, your business decision makers and say, let's go figure out how HPE can help us solve these AI problems. There's a whole dedicated set of content, speakers, customers available to talk to, demonstration areas, hands-on labs. And then we have a third program around, around hybrid cloud, right? It was all the customers need to continue to drive that transformation in order to free up financial, operational, and technical capacity to invest in AI. And I think the, uh, the, 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 the third big change is because we're bringing such a large audience together, the question was, how do you get them all together into one space to hear the one story of HPE? And that's why we invested in the sphere. Ah, so we were at GTC a, a couple of weeks ago and the, the rumor was that Jensen wanted to be in the sphere for GTC, but he couldn't get it. So we saw yesterday, Jensen's actually gonna be in the sphere on stage. So that's a good get that he's gonna be there live. A lot of times he just you know kind of comes in remotely. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, the thing about being first is there's only one that can be first, and Antonio Neri is going to be first. HPE is going to be first in the sphere. So it's going to be the first keynote ever um, delivered in the sphere. We have been working with that team very closely for literally over two years. Um, when we first heard about it, it was first announced. Uh, we started building those relationships, and um, we saw it as a great opportunity for what we had planned in 24 to bring these events together. Um, and now, uh, you know, given our rapid transformation, there's a lot that we have to talk about in terms of how we can help customers solve these AI challenges, especially the enterprise, right, who are still kind of on the sidelines waiting to, to jump all the way in. Um, and then, of course, Juniper. So there's a lot that we have to talk about. And we felt like by making this investment in the sphere, um, not only are you going to reach our core audience, but we can reach a much broader set of people that probably wouldn't normally think to tune in um, to the cube at Discover or, or, or HP Discover in general. So the goal is to reach a much, much broader audience. And, um, and that was the sphere part of it. And then, you know, Jensen obviously is, um, he gets it. He gets what we're trying to do. Um, we have some announcements I can't talk about today, that we, but he's very excited about um, where we're going. And um, he's as eager to get that enterprise and the entry, you know, those lower entry points in the enterprise tuned in to, to, to what we're all doing together. Well, the great thing too about the sphere is it's, it's so proximate to the Venetian. Yeah, right? it's not, yeah. It's not like halfway across town. Well, it's right there. Well, people don't realize that, that if, you, if you're not kind of around that space a lot, people think it's, what are we getting on buses and we have to go to the sphere no, and come right back. there. You yeah, can't miss it. it we're yeah. at the Venetian is where the main show is going to be, but mm. it's literally a three minute walk down yeah. a beautiful, uh, you know, skywalk. You've been there. Um, take you right in there and we'll load in and um, 
we have uh, assembled a whole new team back to rethinking the event, like a whole new team of how we're going to produce this. And um, it's a different animal than anything I've ever done. I'm excited to be part of it. I'm excited too, because GTC was, I think, a huge milestone for this industry. I, I said it was probably the single most important event we'll see um, in the history of the industry and, and setting a new vision. Jensen set out a new vision. And so I'm really interested to see how <coughs> HPE vectors into that. I also understand you've got sort of new programs. I understand there's three new programs for customers and partners. Can you explain what that's all yeah, about? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Um, you know, we're seeing more people that are coming in saying, I just want to dig into AI. So we <laughs> built a whole program just around AI, right? Um, have special keynotes for that, um, hands-on labs, demonstrations, you know, solutions, presentations, guest speakers, current customers. You asked about the use cases mm -hmm. and we'll be sharing what they're doing with us. Right how they're enabling their enterprises. We've got um, um, some, some really big names that are coming in, Deutsche Bank um, in the finance. We've got um, Ericsson and Telco, um, pretty much a who's who across the industry is coming in. And then we have a program around hybrid cloud. They have to continue that transformation. And then we have the, the, the networking and the atmosphere um, conference as well. And you know what we'll see is a lot of crisscross people partaking in both, some just dedicated and focused because that's where they're going to get the most value. At least the right call to bring those together though, because AI is such a data challenge. People want to understand, okay, it's not just the stovepipes anymore. AI is kind of an umbrella that goes across everything. Yeah. And people want to hear, okay, where does, where does Juniper fit? What does that mean for me? I got to ask you while I have you here, there's a lot of talk in the customer base. A lot of customers are concerned about VMware, the VMware licensing. Yeah. You guys are a huge, for years, partner of VMware. What are you telling customers? What are you hearing in the in the field? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of questions and concerns. Um, I think some of that's died down a little bit, but um, our main message to the customer, the VMware customer base is that we're here to help you and enable your best outcome. I think first and foremost, the best possible outcomes that you can get out of VMware, um, especially with VCF. Um, you know, we've, we've been doing a lot with them, as you said, over the years, we're going to continue to do, do those uh, innovations with them. We'll have some announcements for that. Um, I mentioned the, the hybrid cloud program that's part of Discover. A big, huge focus of that is just listening and sharing advice and putting different customers together about how they're navigating all of this, right? Um, how they're approaching it, how they're thinking about their investments, their, their go forward. And we're just really trying to find the best outcome for the customer overall, right? With what they're trying to do. And, um, you know, hey, so let's be honest. I mean, some customers are looking at, um, do I accelerate my container strategy? Um, do I look at another alternative? Should I think differently about storage? You know, how does this all come into play? Um, so we want to facilitate. We mm -hmm. want to be a facilitator of those dialogues. We're going to have our um, advisory and professional services there that have been you know, really shoulder to shoulder since day one with customers working through this. And um, they have a lot of um, experience now and kind of advising and, and guiding. Um, and then of course, we'll have the, the different sponsors that are there and VMware is going to be a huge sponsor for us. And, um, you know, we're, we're all in with VMware. We're going to continue to be um, their number one partner. And we think this is an opportunity just to extend that. I've told customers, look, don't, don't freak out. Don't have a knee jerk reaction, run a business case. Right. Think about it. What, what, what is the business impact? And, and, and weigh the options, um, yeah. so you know, it's going to be okay. And a lot of customers don't even know what their full environment looks like mm -hmm. or what they really have. One of the things we'll be offering at Discover is um, not only those advisory sessions, right, of how you do the, you know, what, what's your transformation look like, but um, we have a tool called Cloud Physics, which is really the best in the yep. industry at going into VMware environments and just understanding what's deployed where, right? What uh, type of licenses are you using? You know, what, what, what revs of that are you using? What's it running on? What's the topology behind that? And we can run that assessment inside the customer environment and then come back and say, here's what we found. Here's five things that can save you a ton of money and improve your outcomes immediately, right? Would you like to hear more? So um, very strong focus this year as part of that hybrid cloud track of how we help customers navigate and get the best outcome. So if you have a hybrid IT strategy, June 17th, right, is the, the, the first day, I believe, yep. of Discover, day after Father's Day. So you got to go to this event. If, if you haven't been and you have an, uh, an IT strategy that involves hybrid IT, hybrid AI, this is where the innovation happens. You got to put HPE on your short list. Who should go? Why should they attend? Um, first of all, I mean, I think that the technologists, the architects, the solution um, developers, um, because there are a lot of moving parts and pieces, and we can really 
um, help dig in underneath the under, underneath the covers and explain how this stuff comes together. It's you know, there's not a magic bullet. There's not a magic product that we can go out and sell that is going to solve all all world hunger. Um, we definitely want to show them not only how we've progressed with the platforms capabilities of HP GreenLake, but also the roadmap of where we're going with that and how that's going to help them, you know, grow over time. And then um, we have we'll be hosting um, significant number of senior executives and business decision makers. And I, I suspect a lot of the conversation is going to be help me build that business case, help me connect all the dots, help me do the basics that I need to do before I just jump into buying GPUs and you know training models and whatever. All that heavy lifting piece helped me build that business case. So the, the business decision maker should come to hear that, to understand our perspective, how our strategy is a, a win for them, um, and also to interact with their peers so that they can compare notes of how they're moving forward. So it'll be a who's who of, of, of the event, both at the technical experts as well as the, the business decision makers. So there's a little bit for everybody. A lot of strategy, a lot of business, a lot of tech. The Cube will be there June 17th. You don't want to miss it, Jason. Thanks so much. Hey, Great thanks to see for you coming again, to town. Friend. Really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. All right, and we'll see you at HPE Discover.